This recording is volume three in the series of unintended indiscretions before microphone and camera, covering a span from the early days of radio to modern day television. It is dedicated to the members of the radio and television industry who have been the victims of these classic boners. Ladies and gentlemen, we regret that due to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable to bring you the baseball game from Rickley Field. So due to a mistake, we bring you Liberace. A recent mayor of New York City was guest of honor at a banquet tendered to him by some fellow Irish Americans. Here is the way the master of ceremonies introduced his honor. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor today is a man you all know. He started as a policeman on the force in harness, rose to be a captain of detectives, and today occupies a position of great eminence in our city. It's my pleasure at this time to introduce to you his honor, Mayor O'Dwyer. On the television show, This Is Your Life, guests and relatives are usually flown in by a well-known airline. On one occasion, Lily Pons, the noted opera star, was the one whose life was being recreated. The master of ceremonies asked her mother if she had been flown in by the airline. Oh, no, I don't like the aeroplane. It's not safe. I took the train. Exciting, alluring, exotic, astounding. Beginning tomorrow at your neighborhood Lowe's Theater, don't fail to see Ava Gardner as the bare-ass Contessa. Several years ago, on the Lux Radio Theater, presided over by Cecil B. DeMille, there occurred what is probably one of the most talked-about incidents in radio history. So come back several years with us and listen to this closing announcement on the Lux Radio Playhouse as it was made by actor Joseph Cotton. Tune in next week when your Lux Radio Theater presents the rollicking comedy success The Major and the Minor, starring lovely Joan Fontaine and Hollywood's newest sensation, that new talented personality, Sonny Tubbs. A very gracious and popular television star got herself into this amusing tangle. I know that I was asked to accept this award for Senator Kefauver as a housewife, because I think that that's what Senator Kefauver did more than anything else in bringing the Senate Crime Investigating Committee into the home, into the kitchen, and giving us all an idea of what was happening right here in New York City. And I know that luckily I was sick the first day of the hearings, so I spent uh, three days in bed enjoying Rudy Halley. <laughs> I must say, I, I got to know his every move so very well. <laughs> no. Wait, wait a minute. But no, what I meant to say is that I missed... <laughs> I really... You know what I mean. It's low overhead that does it. So always shop at Robert Hall where prices are high and quality is low. All right, all right. And now for our next contestant. What is your name, sir? Uh, Jack Friedman. Will you step a little closer to the microphone, please? Uh, right, What's the name again? Jack Friedman. Thank you, Mr. Friedman. And where are you from? From Brooklyn. From Brooklyn. Well, welcome to Sense or Nonsense. Now, you have chosen for your category the sense of sound, That's right? It, yes. Now, you know how we play. We're going to give you certain sounds to identify. And now, here is your first question. Yes. For $10, what is this sound? Now, listen carefully. <laughs> All right, now, what is it? Oh, that's uh, familiar. Very come familiar. on, come on. You've got, you got 10 seconds. You've got 10 seconds. I'm sure you know. Oh, yes, yeah. That's, All right. That's Big Ben and Westchester A.B. <laughs> Stay tuned for Phil Spatulny and his all ghoul orchestra.
For my next selection, I'd like to do a medley of old Stephen Foster's favorites. Among them will be Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair, My Old Kentucky Home, and My Asses in the Dark, Dark Ground. <laughs> On a news interview, a guest had this to say about the situation in Italy. Now, about Mussolini. Uh-huh. Is there anyone in Italy today who will even admit to having been an admirer of his or being a, a member of the fascist party? Oh, no, as a matter of fact, just the opposite. You ask any man or woman in Italy today, and they'll tell you that they never had any use for the douche. Stay tuned to this channel when in 10 seconds, NBC prevents Pinky Lee. And in the world of sports, Yogi Berra, a great Yankee catcher, was accidentally hit in the head by a pitch ball. Yogi was taken to the Fordham Hospital for x-rays of the head. The x-ray showed nothing. On a Man in the Street interview program, a young lady was asked the reason why she was in New York City. Let's listen to her classic answer. I'm getting married next week, and I'm getting my torso ready. Several years ago, David Ross, dean of radio announcers and diction award winner many times, introduced the Latin American troubadour Tito Gazar in this fashion. Let's turn back the clock and hear this classic moment. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Tito, guitar, and his guitar. Some bloopers are made by sound effects departments. Let's listen to a well-known dramatic show as they perform the story of Stanley and Livingston and see what can happen when sound effects go amiss. Beyond the headwaters of the Nile, Stanley continued his search for Livingston. Dense jungle growth and the ever-present danger that set sea fly made the journey more hazardous. Supplies were getting low. The natives have almost reached the breaking point, when suddenly in the distance they heard the sounds of a village. And now back to our all-request recorded program. We've had a request for a record by that popular Irish tenor, Mary Olanza. Uh, pardon me, sir. May, may I ask you your name and where you're from? Yeah, I'm, I'm Sal Bernstein. I'm from Philadelphia. I just came in for the game today. That Willie Mays is sure some ball player. Tell me, Sal, if, if I may call you Sal, are you, uh, are you rooting for uh, the Giants or the Indians? Well, neither one of them. I'm an athletic supporter. The Dorsey brothers, Tommy and Jimmy, had trumpeter Louis Armstrong as the featured guest on their television program, Stage Show. The Dorseys were about to play a number with Louie when Sashmo set the tempo in this fashion. Okay, you cats. Now just play the tempo not too fast and not too slow. Just half fast. Yeah. Before a radio or television program goes on the air, there is a brief period of instruction for the studio audience. This is called a warm-up. The audience is asked to cooperate by applauding or laughing at the proper place and time. Let's listen to What's My Name, the Arlene Francis show of several years ago. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Why, just leave aside applause. We just have 30 seconds to go if anyone has to. Millions have listened to and enjoyed the great symphonic programs by maestro Arturo Toscanini, one of the greatest conductors of all times. But not many have heard this priceless, unguarded moment from a broadcast rehearsal. There is no department barret. The last time I saw 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 the And three, seven, eight, three. What you play in one? Seven, seven, 
Andante! You don't know the Italian thing, Andante, what it means? Un testo o strong... Questo è impossibile ascoltare. Impossible to believe that you can be so stupid. You can believe, no! Corpo di un Dio Santissimo! Madonna Santissima! Basta! I can go! Basta! 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 I can go! Men, stop in at Brightway Hardware while the holiday is still on. In addition to specials on paints, enamels, furniture polish, and floor wax, you can pick up two O-Cedar mops for the price of one. With two O-Cedar mops, you can make housework that much easier for the missus. You can mop up the floor with her. Here is the way a young disc jockey introduced Eddie Fisher's latest recording. And now, girls, in response to your numerous requests, we give you Eddie Fisher's Fanny on a brand new platter. A program that is picked up away from the studio itself is called a remote, such as the prize fights from Madison Square Garden in New York City. But certain cut-ins originate back at the studio. They must be carefully planned and executed, or they may have unfortunate results. And here's some news of local interest. Our neighbors over in Columbia, Tennessee, the largest outdoor mule market in the world, held a jackass parade yesterday headed by the governor. Steve Allen, one of television's best-known performers, makes a practice of conducting ad-lib interviews with people in his studio audience. On one of his late evening programs, he chatted with a woman and awarded her a large salami as a prize. <laughs> my goodness, that's almost as big as my husband's. <laughs> And stay tuned for the late movie, Alexander Dumas' immortal classic, The Count of Monte Crisco, starring Robert Donut. Children are unpredictable, especially on television. Listen to what happened to Maury Amsterdam as he quizzed a five-year-old girl on his daytime show. Uh, say, little girl, uh, what happened to your front tooth? I lost my tooth while I was sitting on a toilet making uh-uh. Even popular Dave Garraway is not immune to early morning flumps. A recent soap commercial on his TV show, Today, sounded like this. And uh, remember, no bathroom should be without it. You'll find dial soap, a refreshing addition to your schlub or tower. Here's a scene from one of your favorite soap operas. I'm sorry, Monsieur Tex. But I, I cannot help it. Miss Roger's will will be drawn just as soon as I can draw the will. I cannot hurry matters. But, Mr. Laniel, I've got to get home to Houston. Now, what's holding this thing up? Miss Roger, she insists before I do anything else, I must look up her heirs. Stay tuned to this station for your evening's entertainment. Immediately following Walter Winchell, hear the current dope in Hollywood. Listen to Luella Parsons. On Arthur Godfrey's talent scouts, a young soldier was being interviewed. The soldier explained that although he was in the U.S. Army, he was not a citizen of this country. He said that he joined the Army in order to obtain his citizenship papers. Godfrey asked how joining the Army could speed up the process. Uh, Mr. Godfrey, uh, the situation has changed. Congress recently packed and asked... <laughs> After 18 years in radio, when I finally make a mistake, I had to make it on your program. <laughs> Let's go back to the year 1942, 
and listen to a war newscast from BBC in England. And the ration board has announced that within the next few weeks, there will be an increase in the allotments of certain food commodities. There's good news on the war front tonight. From North Africa comes word that Allied troops have stopped the advances of Hitler's Panzer Division. You know, man, when you take your favorite girl out for dinner, atmosphere means an awful lot. You'll find the best in German food and the best in sauerbrauten at Joe's Rat Cellar. Good afternoon. This is your Bonds Department Store shopping counselor. After working hours at 6 p.m. on the sixth floor, models will display gowns half off. Sometimes the reason for a blooper isn't understood by the listening audience. On one hot summer day, an engineer came into the control room wearing nothing but a pair of bathing trunks. The announcer spotted him just as they went on the air. This was the result. In our next recording on Midday Meditations, we present... <laughs> Don't forget, tune in tomorrow morning to listen to Phil Cook. He's that clever fellow who plays all voices on his own program. So tomorrow, start your day with laughter. Tune in on Phil Cook, the man with a thousand vices. Our lines have scheduled five flights daily, and you can now fly to Chicago for only $36, Los Angeles for $80, and we promise you that you will find your plane trip to Miami one of the greatest frights you have ever had. Let's listen to a news item heard on the 11 o'clock news. And here is a late story about that fire that broke out on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. The blaze of undetermined origin started in a peanut store on the boardwalk and spread to other stores in the vicinity. The fire threatened the famous Atlantic City Million Dollar Steel Pier. The peanut store front was completely demolished and boardwalk passers-by helped themselves. Tonight, there are many boardwalk moonlight strollers with hot nuts. <coughs> This is WOR-TV. The late and beloved Dr. Walter Damrosch, Dean of American Conductors, took great pride in his music appreciation series broadcast to students in New York schools. But even Dr. Damrosch was not infallible. Let's listen. Our music appreciation program concludes with Tchaikovsky's Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies followed by the delightfully gay music of Mozart's magic fruit. Spoonerisms, the misplacing and mixing up of syllables, are one type of blooper that plague performers. Listen to this commentator on a daytime fashion show. Why not see for yourself just how comfortable these beach sandals are? Now our next creation is a necessity for sun worshippers. A beautiful two-place peace suit. Important news bulletins are put on the air at the earliest possible moment. But sometime they raise havoc with a regularly scheduled program, as witness this interruption of a Wild Bill Hickok episode starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine. He's heading for the pass. You better cut him off, Jingles. We interrupt this program to bring you a bulletin from the Mutual Newsroom, according to an announcement from Moscow Radio. Laurenti Beria has just been executed. We now return you to Wild Bill Hickok. Well, I don't want to hold him for a little while, Bill. This is WCBM AM and FS. No. This is WCBM AS and FS. The stolen gray sedan was found one block from police headquarters. It had been parked there for eight weeks. Credit for the discovery went to James Leary, a defective of the Los Angeles police farce. It isn't always the announcer or the actor who is to blame for the blooper. On many occasions, the news editor, rushing to get his copy on the air, writes something that doesn't come out as intended. Here's an example. And now, oddities in the news. Some people just have to be different. John Dennison of 643 Water Street had his house made upside down. And that's the weather report from the International Airport here at Anchorage, Alaska.
Now I'll take a leak out the window to see if it's freezing outside our studio. Let's tune in on a closing announcement of the second Mrs. Burton, a favorite soap opera of millions. Tune in tomorrow at the same time when George finds he can no longer keep from Helen the serious condition of his business. The pitchmen of television are noted for their high-speed extemporaneous style of speaking. This style of oratory is an open invitation to trouble. Listen to what happened to this chap. A multi quilt is a reversible bedspread with a different color on each side. Only $7.95. She's a beauty. A perfect gift for your wife. If you get tired of her on one side, just turn her over. On a New York television sportscast, the wife of a famous golfer was being interviewed. A simple question brought this classic answer. I most certainly am superstitious. I wouldn't think of letting him play an important golf tournament without kissing his bull. And so we conclude volume three of the Pardon My Blooper series of classic radio and television bonus. Additional albums in this series will be released soon. Until we meet again, then, we leave you with the words of Carolyn Gascoigne, who said, An error gracefully acknowledged is a victory won. <laughs>